Hello there, friendly neighbors. Welcome back to my channel. And more importantly, welcome back to my kitchen, the place where disasters always happen. Today, I wanted to film for you guys a little video on my meal prep. I have done a meal prep video in the past, but my meal prep has changed quite a lot because I now have more ferrets and I also switched from feeding my ferrets grinds to feeding them Frankenprey. I wanna make it really clear right off the bat that this is not a how-to video. This is specifically just a video on how I personally do my meal prep. Every single ferret is a little bit different and every ferret is gonna have a slightly different meal plan. So if you are someone who is looking to create a meal plan for your ferrets, I will have a video linked down below about how you can do that. It is from my friend Bethy on her channel, Duke Souls. I think it is a great video. It is super simplified, makes the idea of Frank and Prey a lot easier for people who are possibly a little bit intimidated by it. Um, so yes, go watch that video. Before I continue on further, yes, I am not wearing makeup and yes, I am in my pajamas because it's Sunday and legally, I can do whatever I want on Sundays. So for me today, that is looking like this all day and staying comfortable. I'm gonna be comfortable. I'm allowed. My glasses are really dirty though, I just realized. I'm gonna go clean those on this piece of fabric over here. Ooh, HD. To start things off, I'm gonna show you guys uh, my meal plan that I have for my ferrets, just so that you can understand sort of what I'm doing with my meal plan. So this is what my basic meal plan for my ferrets looks like. As you can tell, it's not very exciting. It's, it's pretty standard looking and we don't have too much craziness going on. I feed my ferrets this thing that I have now dubbed the ferret smoothie. It is a mix of all of the heart, liver, and other secreting organ that my ferrets need throughout the week. But then it also has added in blue mussel, tripe, and salmon. This is because my ferrets refuse to eat any of these things unless they are blended up and added to something that they are willing to eat. So I found out through lots of trial and error that the best way to actually get them to eat their fish their blue muscle and their tripe is if I just mix it in with other things. And you know, that's a really good example of how when you are making a meal plan for your ferrets, you might want them to eat something a certain way, but you kind of have to compromise and just do it a different way. I wish I could just feed them whole muscles and they would eat them, but that's just not how my ferrets do. So we blend it up. On my meal plan, you also might notice that I do not feed my ferrets muscle meats. This is not because I don't feed my ferret muscle meats at all. This is because when I'm feeding duck necks and rabbit, which are a pretty standard part of my diet, you will see that when I'm prepping everything, they tend to not eat the bones off of these things. They normally just chew the bones a little bit and then they'll spit them out. So because of that, when I was putting chicken breast and stuff into their meal plan, I noticed that their poops were really, really runny because they weren't getting enough bone into their bodies. So to avoid this, I just strictly feed bone in meat and then the thing that have slightly harder bones like the rabbits and the duck they will just eat around the bone it actually works out pretty well because then they do get the dental benefits of eating bone because they still sit there and chew it for a bit but they're technically just eating a muscle meat meal so hey you know what my ferrets do get some other things added into their meals. Besides this, with every meal that I feed them, I also add bone broth and I add a little bit of the Big Country Raw lamb grind. This is because my ferrets refuse to eat red meat unless it is specifically this grind. Luna is still pretty picky with her Frankenprey, so she'll only eat it if it's coated in the lamb grind because then that's something that she likes. And I also add in egg. I give them egg for a snack um, every Wednesday. Sometimes I mix up the days if I'm busy that day, but normally I feed it on Wednesday. Like many people who feed Frank and Prey, I balance my ferrets meals over a week. So that means that instead of getting everything that they need in a single day, by the end of the week, they've had a balanced meal and they have everything that they need. I prep my ferrets meals once a week, every Sunday. It's Sunday today, hence the how I look. Because I find that I change my meal plan pretty often. There's normally things that I'm adding in or things that I'm tweaking. So if I only do it once a week, then I can just tweak what I need to change every week. Also, I have pretty limited freezer space. So fitting 14 containers, into my freezer, it's just not gonna happen. I can fit strictly seven and that's all we're gonna be able to do. All right, so now that I've talked for long enough, my intros are always too long, I'm sorry, I'm aware of this. I am going to actually start with my meal prep and I will show you guys how I do it. So I need to take a detour to the freezer. So in my freezer, I basically have two giant bags one bag, this one right here, is for all the stuff that goes into my ferret soups. And then this bag here is all of my raw meaty bones. So I'm gonna start off with grabbing everything that I need for the soup because I need more things and it's more complicated. Very important, the scale. 
I got the pinchies. A Ziploc bag. So I'm just gonna take every single thing that I need for my soup for the week and I'm gonna put it in this Ziploc bag and then I'm gonna throw it in the sink so that it can defrost so that I can blend it up into a soup. All right, so I have turkey hearts from Modern Canine. So, and then I have these uh, beef heart chunks. They're just little cubes of beef heart. So I'm gonna start off with a big chunk of beef heart. See how much that weighs. Heart is done. Now we're gonna be going to our liver. Like I said, my ferrets really love turkey organs. So I have turkey liver and, oh, I have rabbit liver. It's just such a random assortment. You never know what you're gonna find when you go digging in here. All right, got my liver in there. I have a lot of turkey liver. I think I picked up more last time I was there, but I really didn't need to. Oh well. All right, and then I go into my secreting organs. So I do 107 grams of secreting organ to once again be the 5% of my ferrets diet. I generally try and feed either two different secreting organs or two secreting organs from different animals. Um, so for today, I do have some rabbit kidney, which is a little bit rare. The whole rabbits that I buy do come with kidneys. So every once in a while, I've gathered enough of them to add them into my soup. So this is 54 grams of beef kidney, according to what I have it labeled as, but I like to weigh it just to double check. I do have a couple of quail organs as well because I had some whole quail, so I'll throw those in. And I also have this really tiny little quail heart in there. I'll add that in sometime. <laughs> Awesome, so that's all of my liver and organ meats. And then I need to add in my salmon, blue mussels, and tripe. So my salmon I get from Big Country Raw. I just get the pure salmon blend they have. It's just a blend of salmon muscle meat. And I portion it into little 50 gram containers. So I know that I need two of these. Then I get my blue mussels, which I just buy from the grocery store. Um, they're really conveniently packaged because they're individually frozen. Well, for the most part, how many are in here? One, two, three, there's seven, that's fine. And then um, I raved about this in my last video. It's the Canine Choice Tripe. I love it because like I said in the last video, it's just really conveniently portioned into these little cubes that just makes life so much easier. Because I put in a little bit more blue muscle than I normally do, I'm gonna put in a little less tripe than I normally do. So I normally put in 50 grams, I'm gonna put in 40 instead, just to sort of balance that out. The main reason that I feed tripe and blue muscle is for manganese, so they sort of can cancel each other out in my mind. So that's why I do that. So here's everything that goes into my organ soup. Now this goes into my sink to be dealt with in a moment. And now I have to repack this whole bag. I have got my giant bag of raw meaty bones. My ferrets eat 155 grams of raw meaty bones per meal. They have their ferret soup for four meals a week. So that means that they have 10 meals of raw meaty bones a week, including their whole prey meal. So I have to feed them 1,555 grams of raw meaty bones, including their whole prey meal. As I mentioned in my last video, Modern Canine just started stocking whole quails. My ferrets were previously eating dressed quails that I bought from the grocery store. So it's gonna be their first time this week trying whole quail. I'm so excited. I wanna get my ferrets on whole prey. Like, it's, oh, I'm, I'm excited. I don't even have words for it, as you can tell by my lack of words. So in order to convince them to eat whole quail, I feel like I'm not gonna be able to just like give my ferrets the whole quail. So what I have done is last night, I plucked most of the feathers off of the quail that I got. I also took the organs out of it, which I have now added to my organ soup. And I removed the head, wings, and feet. I have kept these and I will feed them to my ferrets at a later date once they are more comfortable eating these things. So I basically made it look like a version of the quail that they're used to eating, just with a little bit more feathers and possibly a little bit of organ left inside of it because I don't know if I got it all out. So I'm gonna take my frozen whole quail and just put it back in this bag. I don't need to cut it up or anything like I'm gonna have to do with this other meat so I'm just gonna leave it in the bag and not dethaw it because there's no point in me dethawing it just to refreeze it. Along with that, a new thing to my ferret's diet is also chicken heads. I am quite excited to be feeding these um, just because 
I like adding new things into their diets. Um, I have, how many of them did I buy? I have three of them. I'm gonna just give them one this week and see how they do with it. And then I will gauge how many to feed them according to how well they do with that. Just like the quail, because it's frozen individually and I don't need to cut it up, I'm not gonna de-thaw it because there's no point. So I'm just gonna pop that in the bag with the frozen quail. Now I gotta go digging. Ah, here it is. So I have a quarter of a rabbit. So I'm gonna weigh that. And then I also have duck necks. All right, so there are my two duck necks and my rabbit. So now I need to just add my chicken backs in in order to get this to weigh at that, um, how much do I need? 1,550 grams, yes. So, chicken backs. So I'm almost there and a full chicken back just weighs too much. So what I do then is, Fill the rest of it with chicken wing tips. I like to feed these instead of chicken wings because with chicken wings, my ferrets just pull the meat right off of them. Whereas with the wing tips, it's like mostly cartilage. So they actually have to eat some of the bone with it. Oh my God, that's exactly, oh my, I'm exactly there. I am gonna throw in one extra wing tip just in case because it's gonna weigh a little bit less just because there is blood and stuff in this, which is gonna de-thaw and then take away some of the weight, so. All right, so these are my two bags. Why? These are my two bags of raw meaty bones, excluding the whole quail and chicken heads. So I'm gonna pop these in the sink along with everything that goes in with my organ soup. And I'm gonna just let it chill in some ice cold water for a couple hours. Normally I let it sit for about two or three hours, just to the point that I can cut it. It doesn't necessarily need to be completely dethawed, but I will be back in a couple hours. And I'm also gonna clean all of this up. Why is there a child screaming outside of my window? It's Sunday. Stop. I'll be back in a couple hours. We are back. My meat has de-thawed. So I am now ready. As you can tell by this beautiful counter of things, I am ready to prep my food. I put all of my food in these little containers that I got at the dollar store, AKA the most wonderful place in the world. I put a single day in each container. So I'll normally put like breakfast on this half and dinner on this half. That's just how we do. So that's how we're gonna do. And then I put the soups in, in these containers, which I put inside of the containers because they, they fit nicely. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is when they get their soups. So there, I have those little placeholders. And then from here, it's basically just filling the empty spaces I have with the raw meaty bones. I'm gonna go grab some of those. So I said absolutely nothing um, important at all during this segment of me cutting meat. So I'm just gonna uh, let you guys watch it and I'll just do a voiceover real quickly here. Um, so yeah, this is just me cutting up all the raw meaty bones I need for my weekly meal prep. As you can see, I use poultry shears. I am terrified of cleavers. And I think that if I even just like looked at a cleaver weird, I would probably cut a finger off. So I'm definitely not gonna use one to cut up meat. Um, so I just struggle through the using the poultry shears, but hey, that's me, no judgment. This is my channel, I do what I want. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. Uh, have fun watching the rest of the clip. Okay. All right, and uh, that's all of my raw meaty bones. It takes like 15 minutes, it literally, it's so easy. And now I'm gonna handle my ferret soup. So I blend everything up in my food processor, which I love, I talked about it in another video. Now I normally do cut it up a little bit beforehand. I won't cut up like, this is the salmon, I don't need to cut that up. The tripe I don't need to cut up. Actually, I might a little bit. It's still a little bit frozen, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Throw that bad boy in there. Um, and then the rabbit kidneys are small enough that I don't feel like I need to cut those up because they're pretty tiny. Same goes for the blue mussels. Those can just get thrown right in. But I definitely need to cut up my turkey livers. They're quite big and I just don't wanna 
kill my food processor. I literally just got it. All right, and this is what's gonna be turned into my organ soup there. It's just a big mush of a random stuff that my ferrets need in their week. So I'm going to take off my glove as I no longer need it. And my fingers are really, really cold, so I'm gonna wash my hands in some warm water. And now we blend. I believe we've done it, boys. Disinfect. So now I'm gonna take these four containers I have that were specifically for my ferret smoothie, and it doesn't smell good. Rest assured, the tripe and salmon in there really, really, really mix. And now I do have one more thing to add in. <laughs> I got this really cute mold, but I put the lamb grind in here and I'm gonna just like pop these out and see if they actually look cute or if they didn't work at all. <gasps> oh my God, look at that little bear. Oh my God, that's so cute. <gasps> I dropped it. It's okay. These are adorable. So I'm just gonna be adding those into my soups for nothing other than them being really, really cute. Oh my God, look at that fox. Okay, these are straight up beyond adorable. I can't tell which ones I like the best. I think these ones turned out the best. Look at that. Look at how cute that is. I'm gonna be abusing these molds like crazy. Okay, anyway, I gotta put these in here now and stop being really excited about the stupid little grinds. There you have it. That is um, all of my food. Look how beautiful it is. I am, I'm very proud. Um, and like I said, I do also add lamb grind in, so they do get a red meat, I assure you. They get um, two, like two spoonfuls pretty much of the uh, lamb grind every meal. So they're definitely getting enough uh, red meat in there. Um, so now all that I have to do is I have to label them and somehow put them in my freezer, which is always the hardest part. And there you have it folks. That is how I do my meal prep. Now I have to go do all of these dishes um, because they're gross. Um, so yes, I will see you guys uh, next week. I don't think I'm gonna be doing another video on raw feeding. I do have a couple other ideas for videos I wanna do on the subject, but honestly, I'm just tired of doing raw feeding videos. It's been like four weeks in a row now, and I just wanna do something else. I'm sure you guys will appreciate a change of pace. Um, I will see you guys next week when I do something else. Have a great rest of your week. Um, goodbye. Kenya, you crazy. You really trying to dismiss the people and you haven't even brought up this month's Friendly Neighborhood Business Box? What's wrong with you? I mean, well, actually, I was, I was really tired by the point in this video, um, based on the fact that the next two minutes of footage are me just staring at the 
corner. I don't know what I was doing. I was tired. Anyway, that's not what I'm talking about. Friendly Neighborhood Business Boxes, everyone. This month's Friendly Neighborhood Business Box is up on my Etsy page, etsy.com slash fnferrets. Uh, you guys have heard my spiel about business boxes before. Here are all the fun things that come in every single business box. It's a mystery box. You don't know what it's going to be. But if you're curious what type of items are in them, here are some examples of boxes from a couple months ago. Oh my goodness, don't those look exciting. Anyway, check out business boxes on my Etsy. You can also get the small one if you don't want to commit to a large one. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. I'm just gonna plug myself here. Um, voiceover Kenya is gonna dismiss you because video Kenya is still zoning out staring at that corner of my wall. So yeah, have a great week everyone. I'll see you next week. Bye!